hold in my hand a Dyson V10 Total Clean. It's in for a repair because as well as pulsing itself on even setting number one, it's also suffering from a smashed cyclone. Look at that. Plastic is just falling apart. Although I can't bend it, so it's obviously not that brittle. But yeah, second one I've had. A lot of other people in the trade and who just own them have also experienced this. So we're going to actually take this off because we're not going to need this. And get this Dyson V10, which still has its bin sticker on, working well again. Look, it's still flashing now. Bless it. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? This video is probably going to net me a fair bit of abuse online because obviously it's a Dyson. They don't break. What could possibly need to be done to this? Well, Dyson have refused to fix it under warranty for the owner, which I am 100% fine with obviously it is accidental damage the owner doesn't know how it happened i think knowing how easily my v11 falls over even with the little rubbery pad it's fallen and taken a bashing and i'm not the only person to have seen that so our goal today is to get this apart and this time i'm doing the repair properly last time we just glued it on the owner's request this time i have an entire spare dead handheld at my disposal we'll have a look at it later when we get this apart a bit more but for now we are going to look at this and the first thing that we need to do is i need to clean the filter the owner says it's always got that dirty i'm i don't know i've seen them this dirty but again going from the v11 and other collectors who have a v10 obviously it's when it's when the bin's open and obviously you turn it on all the dirt fires straight through and looking at the state of this has come out the other side so i they don't get that dirty in use my v11 certainly does and it gets dusty every bagless vacuum cleaner will especially one that you use at all angles etc so i'm not going to read too much into this i think it's just been poorly maintained so we'll pop that to one side and while we're here we shall take off the bin because we won't need that either i'll try to do this video a bit better than my last v v10 video that wasn't really supposed to be as popular as it was it's very popular but fact is there's just not much v11 technical content out there and it's not going to be long before these don't have a warranty left and people are going to want to fix them. So what we're doing first is removing the three screws that hold the battery in place because we don't want the battery popping on and off with us. This thing is pouring out crap everywhere. It's one of the reasons I've got this bit of carpet down on my table really just to stop it from getting it dirty and so you don't have to look at the polka dot pattern the entire time. And I've also got the screw card from the last v11 which is quite cool so the battery is off and out and we now have a nice dead handheld unit which is always what you want now to get started we need to remove the screws from the back and separate this part from all of the cyclone and they are crossheads which is always telling on a Dyson because usually the crossheads are reserved for the more user serviceable, frequently accessed parts of the machine. And yeah, the ones holding in all the motor housing around the back are definitely crossheads. Whether that's telling on something or it was all they could find, who really will ever know. But there's four along the top. 
there's number three, and here is number four. Already the motor part is separating from the cyclone itself. And then there's two more back here under the slider. These were a bit longer, I think. Can't remember now. No, they're not. They are all the same size. So that is nice and handy. With that removed, wow, the motor housing will come away from the cyclone, which we'll look at that in a minute whilst we concentrate on this. Now, that's not actually plaster dust. That is just dust. You can tell it's plaster dust because if you rub it into your fingers, and as disgusting as this sound, it stays there. This is just rubbing off. So that is delightful. I'm also looking at my nemesis here, which is in there. God, this thing is just raining crap. Same trick that my V11 pulls quite a lot. Now we can remove this part now because hidden underneath the motor housing is one last little tiny torque screw. Of course it is. Which once we remove that, that part lifts off. And we get just a little bit more access to the whole thing. Now once that is out, we need to work from the bottom and take off this ceiling ring here. Which we shall do now. With that done, the whole thing will pull apart and you can start to see all of the internals look. All of this, whoa. Wow. I'm sorry, I don't really ever bash Dyson, but that is musty smelling, just fine dust. In the old Dysons, that would sit under the cone inside the bin and be very easy to get out. This, not so much, because that was all in there. It all narrows out to get out of there. What a mess. Right, I now need to remember how I got this out. I think I just pushed it through. But I cannot actually fully remember. So I'm going to pause, work out how to do this, and then come back and tell you that's it. You push this plug up from inside and then you've got to almost push this back in to get just enough slack to take apart the little electrical connection that is now poking out of the top. And it seems to be a sort of rubber boot around the plug. Oh, I can't really show this very well. I can barely see it myself. I'm afraid. So you'll just have to take my word for it. And then once you slide the rubber boot off, this should separate. Crikey, that needs to go down a lot more. And then the pins will come out of the plug like so. And then, ha ha, we have separation. Now I'm going to wash this up really, the only slight pain is, is that this is very much still in there and having tried to remove it before it is a pig, however obviously electricity and water do mix as long as you don't turn it on whilst it's wet so that is perfectly safe to go through the wash as long as it's left to thoroughly dry beforehand, that is the little plastic cover it goes around the wiring connector like so. Now we can remove the shroud from the machine. And for that, there are three more screws down here. Now, I suppose you're asking me, why don't I literally just whip both of these sides apart and put them on? Well, because obviously I want to do a video on this, so I may as well do it properly. 
I'd also like, I mean, I'll probably clean, I'm probably going to wash the parts and put it back together because there's no point in me just swapping it round if it's so full internally, poor thing, that it's just not going to work as well. I may as well do it properly. Yeah, get a little video out of it for you. And give the customer back something nice. Now, to get the shroud off of the inner, you need to pop the housing apart here, which could literally just be, you know, this one's already slightly done itself, putting a screwdriver down there. Then the shroud will slide off over the, <laughs> the dirt entry chamber. And there we go. This thing won't be a year old yet. Bless it. I'm dreading to think what my V11, which again has never been used for DIY, will look like. So there's the shroud. We can now see, yay, even more screws. I'd best put these in here out of the way. Your same small screwdriver will remove all of the screws that now hold the actual cyclone itself together. Once you've sort of dug out the heads from their coffin of dust. It's definitely not plaster dust. It doesn't smell like plaster dust. You can tell. I've stripped down enough Dysons that have had death by plaster dust before. This is just normal use. And I don't know. I'm just not. It's just not in my brain, especially after many bagged vacuums where this doesn't really happen unless you let one blow. It's just not normal. Last screw is under here. And then with those out of the way, I think it just, yeah, it pulls apart. So there is that bit. Then the top bit comes off. There's some more inner cones there. Look, all completely stuffed up. This is actually the bit that we don't need anymore. Look, you can see it goes into those cones. So that's actually for the bin. This is also for the bin. Although I will take the gasket out just in case it's any better than the one in there. Although I don't think it makes many odds. You can then also, if you're really doing this properly, I don't think there's any hidden screws. I think it does just pop out. Come on. Take all of this bit out as well to give it just a really good, I still can't believe that, wash. So there's that really. Although judging by how much crud is coming out of the motor, I think it would be silly to not put these screws into their card. And take out the two screws for the motor because obviously the customer's having this bit built back on to the new body. And I can't leave it like this, that's just silly. Absolutely silly, yeah. Dyson, I doubt they're watching this, I doubt they care that much. They've got to sort out the motor being able to come on with the bin open. They, they, they just really do. And then that's loose, and then but there's something else that needs to happen next because the wires are caught. And I now again try to remember from the last one I did, and that might be it, what I actually did. Because there we go, that just pops off there. So that's the back of our motor. Ah, oh, here is our working motor, but with a burnt bit on the PCB. Oh dear, oh dear. That's why we need to, we can't get it out. We've got to now remove the two torque screws that hold the main feed wires in for the battery. That's what's stopping this from coming out, is those two little wires here. Oh, no. Different size torque screws once more. Oh, I just rounded one off. Oof. 
Luckily, we have a spares machine that we can replace it with. Ah, this is all coming back to me now. You then get a pair of pliers and bend these crimps straight. So they slide down the very small gap. In the back of the motor. Remembering to pop off the very small white connector, which I think is part of the battery temperature sensor. And that bit is out. The actual motor lives in here. And levering up ever so gently and removing yet another plug, which goes to the speed control, which is actually here. That is all that does the speed control on a V10. We can pull the motor out. That means that I can get this very saturated bit of sponge out so it will no longer blow out crud when it's on. Heck, we could even remove this rubber boot to give it a good wash. But possibly not. And yeah, this is a Dyson Digital Motor. I'm really quite worried about that burn mark, mainly because the little tail of the solder joints just come off. There we go. Let's pause on that if you want to look at Dyson's blowing up. To all intents and purposes, we are nearly done. There's just two more screws here, which are the cover for where all of the wires go through. Can be a little bit tricky to hit all of the screws on this as well. But with a slight angle on your screwdriver, you will do it. There we go. Oh, I'd best card up some screws. <laughs> Main wires to PCB, that's you. Motor cover, that's you. I can't remember where these two long screws go. I'm going to say channel. Ah, that's right. I have your screws the wrong way around. Always have your screws the right way around, folks. <sighs> then if I recall correctly, this part pops up just because it's got all the wires running through it. You've just got to sort of push them through and out. So having these terminals completely flat is the key here. There we go. And eventually they will come out. And then underneath, I think, there is buried right down in there is another screw, which, yep, this screwdriver can reach. So that's good. The whole switch assembly should now pretty much pull out. He says, not pulling it out. Ooh, what are you caught on? Come on. There's nothing holding you in now. Is there a little plastic tab here that I can see? No, bear with. Well, that wasn't too bad. I just pushed straight down on here like so. And yeah, this is the whole switch mechanism of a Dyson. All of the stuff that we want to wash up in the box. I'm actually not going to bother with any of that. We'll use all of the new stuff. There we go. That can be washed in a minute. Then got to clean up this workbench.
we can strip this down as well, which I shall do in fast forward because obviously I taught you all badly on the first one. The only benefit to stripping down a spares machine is I don't even have to card up the screws. They can all just go in the bin. Now this machine is much better, I will concede, to the other one, but knowing how much fine dust my own V11 billows out of the bottom of this part, it's just what they do sadly. Now I'm not going to wash those up, all I actually want is this stuff here, which obviously forms the new cyclone. And the next time that you see this, it will be washed and ready to go back together. So, join me in part two, where all of these very dusty parts will be cleaned, shiny, and ready to go back together. If you've got any questions, please comment below. Um, I do read them and answer them, obviously, if you're a little child who loves Dyson above everything else and thinks that what I'm doing is awful, Comment as well. I do bite back. But for now, our very simple cyclone replacement has got a little bit sidetracked because I can't put the machine back together like this. But never fear. Video two, we shall. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you soon. Bye bye.